Ask any of the great animators of all time, and they'll all tell you the same thing. That the goal in their art is never achieving a sense of realism and design. Good animation isn't about reproducing live-action images with ink and paper. That's why no real mouse looks like Mickey, no rabbit like Bugs, and no crotchety old curmudgeon like this. The thing every animator should strive to achieve is believability. And so much of what creates believability is movement. You may not know his name, but Richard Williams was and still is one of the medium's all-time greatest craftsmen, a figure who spent a lifetime becoming not only a master of simple mechanics, but a constant innovator, always experimenting with new ways of capturing what no other form of art can. And it's because of that that no animated film has ever moved like the ones Richard Williams has created. Let's dive in. First, there's the movement of character. Like every great director, Williams' work has stemmed from the fact that character is action, and that a character's design, no matter how elaborate or striking, only fulfills half of the job. The way a particular character moves should tell us just as much, or arguably more so, about their personality than the way that they look. Like my 17th cousin, who is 156 times removed from any side! So the evil wizard Zigzag is boisterous and suspicious. The thief slinks and slides so as not to be seen. Ebenezer Scrooge hunches and cowers and Raggedy Ann, well, moves exactly like how you'd expect a Raggedy Ann doll to move. But even more than that, part of what's made William's character animation so unique are his growing attempts to construct a near constant fluidity within all of his characters' actions. See, the business of traditional hand-drawn animation is often about an economy of frames. As animation was developed, it quickly became standard that simple action would be animated on twos, meaning that one drawing is shown for two frames, giving you a total of 12 drawings for one full second of film. However, the easiest way to get any project done quicker and cheaper is to limit that number of drawings, animating not on twos, but on threes, fours, or even sixes. That's not to say that a fewer number of drawings per second is automatically a bad thing, but only that it was the environment that Williams grew up in and trained in his early days, bemoaning the uneven, jerky movement of something like Yellow Submarine. Mm. And none the worse for our adventures. Mm. Reminiscence in many ways of... Mm. The late Mr. Ulysses. Peer complex. In his own work, Williams has a tendency to move in the opposite direction and animate on ones, meaning one drawing for every single frame of film. An incredibly time-consuming and expensive method that was likely the reason his masterpiece The Thief and the Cobbler was taken away from him near the end of its production, but a method that yields amazingly fluid results. He control the depths. Yes! <laughs> Number two is the movement of the camera, or rather, because there is no camera, the simulation of camera movement. Instead of viewing the image and everything inside of it as flat and two-dimensional, Williams has an incredible knack for visualizing everything with a live-action mindset, so much so that a shot like this can feel almost like 3D. The key to this is drawing in perspective, something that's become a major staple of Williams' overall filmography. That and checkerboard designs. Seriously, lots and lots of checkerboard designs. Anyway, it's movement like this, especially when combined with a blank background, that allow him to not only move in a way that isn't limited spatially, but to do things that are virtually impossible in live action. Like here, in his most recent short film, Prologue, that's animated to look entirely like one log sequence without any cuts. But even more than that, it's his mastery over the technique that allowed him to execute his most well-known work, the animation on Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Hold still, will ya? Does this help? Yeah, thanks. I said to Bob, I've already done these commercials violating the rules, and, and I know you can use a moving camera. We have to draw every frame, and we have to draw every frame in perspective as the camera's coming closer or going around him. So there's a lot of work for us, and very expensive, but that's gonna make it work. When he finds out, he's gonna be mad. He might try to kill ya. The second thing was we were able to get the cartoons to be two and a half dimensional. If you look at them closely, it's, it's not 3D, it's two and a half. <laughs> if that. Yeah, that's it. Beat the horn twice. Cover your back. Boy, I'm ready. Duke's up. I see you. Ears to the ground. Why nobody gets the proper on the rabbit? 
but all of the shots here only involve the movement of the character. What if they were full on? That brings us to number three, the combined movement of the character, the camera, and the location itself. Early in his career, Williams would limit movements like these to simple short shots, little 90 degree rotations like this. But the more he's worked, the more the shots have gotten complex and absolutely massive. I mean, just, just, just watch this. Big sweeping shots like these aren't at all uncommon in traditional animation, but ironically, when Williams was creating shots like these in the early 90s for The Thief and the Cobbler, other studios were turning to early forms of CGI to handle the animation for a moving location. CGI which now looks arguably dated and clunky. But with Williams, it was only ever ink, paper, and perspective. Break it down and it's not that much different from any of the simplest movements he's done though. It's just the same idea of drawing in perspective, except now infinitely bigger and infinitely more time consuming to get just right. But it's shots like these that are why Williams has become so famous within the animation world. Thinking with a live action mindset can no doubt help you create something fluid and dynamic, but it's when you begin thinking past live action that you can create something really exciting, because animation can accomplish what live action can't. In a world where the two mediums are growing closer and closer to one another, Williams was and still is one of the last remaining members of the old guard who wanted to go in the exact opposite direction. For nearly 70 years, he's never been interested in animation that looks like live action, or vice versa, but in pushing animation to do what nothing else can. I want to make animation grow up. It doesn't always have to be Mickey Mouse, beat it up movement, and slapstick humor. Animation ought to be able to carry serious concepts. It should be able to move slowly and with dignity. And it can be beautiful and lyrical. All these things are possible for animation, but we've only just begun to scratch the surface. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and are interested in learning more about animation techniques, you can check out this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with more than 18,000 classes available, covering animation, graphic design, photography, film production, and so much more. And with a premium membership, you can get unlimited access to incredibly high quality classes, all taught by experts working in their respective fields, all for less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. Every corner of filmmaking, whether it be screenwriting or directing or editing or cinematography or animation, requires both constant practice and constant learning, and Skillshare is without a doubt one of the best platforms to help you improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work you love. And available only for the month of January, you can get three months of Skillshare for only 99 cents. Go to skl.sh slash royalocean to sign up today.